Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. It is the last day of the month of October and I thank God for what he has done, what he is going to do in our time and in our season. Want to share a few things with you before we go into conclusion of this week's series. As you know, this week we have been covering God's covenant promises fulfilled. On Tuesday, October the 29th, we covered Jehovah Rapha, the covenant promise to heal. Wednesday, October the 30th, we covered El Roha, the covenant promise to see me. And today we're going to cover Jehovah Mish. Kadim, the promise to sanctify. So excited about that. Also, I want to share with you that on tomorrow, November the 1st, during our extension of the classroom, we created from the classroom podcast right here via Spriker Radio. It airs at 11 o'clock a.m. For the entire month of November, we are going to do a teaching on spiritual growth, utilizing our book, A Breakthrough in My Life, A Guide to Spiritual Growth. Once again, for the month of November, via from the podcast, The Classroom. We have from The Classroom podcast, in which we're going to share with you, spiritual growth and we will utilize our book a breakthrough in my life a guide to spiritual maturity on mondays from october the 28th through november the 28th on monday nights at seven o'clock p.m we will share from our pod bean podcast so that's another platform From our book, Sounding the Alarm, a biblical teaching of the mantleship of the prophet. That's 7 o'clock p.m. on Mondays via Podbean. This information has been added to our website as well as to the Facebook page for The Balance of Life. Also, we have so many things going on, right? Saturday, November the 2nd through January 25th. On Saturday mornings at 11 o'clock a.m., we will be in our virtual classroom. We extend an invitation to you if you would like a complimentary seat to just sit in in the virtual classroom for this teaching. You are more than welcome. Simply email us here at the balance of life one at yahoo.com and we will send you a link in which you can sit in the virtual class absolutely free no charge we're going to cover the overview of the ascension gifts week one we will cover the overview weeks two through three We will cover the mandate of the apostle. Week four, the obligations of the prophet. Weeks five through six, the eyes of the pastor. Weeks seven through eight, the reach of the evangelist. And weeks nine through 10, the dedication of the teacher. Now, all registered students after completing this 10 week course of the overview of the ascension gifts will receive a certificate of completion from angel ferguson ministries we are a registered college of religious institution registered with the state of florida recognized as well have been for the past seven years to god be the glory So therefore, once you complete one of our courses, you can receive a certificate of completion from Angel Ferguson Ministries, School of Ministry and Mentoring Programs. 
All right. I wanted to get that out of the way and I will mention them again because I don't want you to miss out on those opportunities. So what we're covering today is Jehovah Mekadishim. And I please forgive me if I mispronounce that. It means the Lord who sanctifies. This is one of the covenant promises to us from God. God sets us apart as a chosen people, a royal priesthood, holy unto God, a people of his own. He cleanses our sin and helps us mature. That is an awesome covenant promise. Let's look at that. Helping us to mature. Do you know how important that is? How precious that is? How it demonstrates God's love and kindness towards us? That he wants to help us mature? That we're not out here all by ourselves. We're not all alone. But in fact, he gives us help. And that help is demonstrated where Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the father and he will send you another comforter. That is the help that we have. We have the written, holy, inspired word given to us as a record, as counsel, as wisdom. And we have the Holy Spirit who helps us to understand, give us a revelation of that holy, inspired, written word. Not only that, the Holy Spirit guides us and gives us dunamis power to do the work of the Lord. Help to help us mature. I'm excited about that alone. Because if we want to mature in Christ, we have help. And the reality is, not everyone wants to mature. Some people want to remain as babes. In this walk, you have to want to grow. You have to want to mature. This is a personal journey. And each and every one of us must become intentional in this journey. On last night as teaching Bible study, and I thank God for each and every one of you who were able to tune in to Wednesday night's Bible study with Faith Outreach Deliverance Church, Bridgeton, New Jersey, where the overseer is Apostle Roma D. Allen Sr., and the pastor is Dr. Lillian C. Allen. Last night, the teaching was building my relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And at that time, I did express it is very personal. This is your relationship. And to know that we serve a God, we have a God, a Father which is in heaven, that wants us to mature in Him. He wants us to grow up. So therefore, yes, the Word of God does bring chastisement. It rebukes us. It corrects us. It reproves us. It shapes us and it molds us. For the master's use. Not only that. As being the God who sanctifies. What he does. And I know I started from the bottom. But let's go up. He cleanses our sins. How does that happen? But by the word of God. You're cleansed. Through the word. Sanctified. Through the word. He sets us apart. Those who are called by his name. 
who would humble themselves, pray and seek his face and turn from their wicked ways. These are the individuals who belong to the Lord God. Those who have believed in their heart by faith and confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord are the ones who belong to him. Those who walk by faith, those who are obedient. He speaks a word in Deuteronomy 28 that says, if you love me, okay, if you would hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, to love him is by demonstration of keeping his commandments. That's how we love God. We know that by faith that God is. For without faith it is impossible. Okay. It is impossible. To come to him without faith. So those who come to him must come to him by faith. Without faith it is impossible to please God. And along with that faith it must be coupled with obedience so we are a chosen people a royal priesthood we are holy unto God a people of his own let's look at some scripture texts over in Exodus the 31st chapter Beginning at the 12th verse, and it reads as follows. This is demonstrating about God's people. You know, one thing is that being set aside, we learn how to be God's people. This is a learning way. Wherefore should the Egyptians speak, say, This is talking about God's chosen people. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbaths ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that doeth sanctify you. So this is something that we have to know. Ye shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone defieth it shall surely be, listen, the death that they're talking about, uh, this is a spiritual death. When we don't keep the commandments of God over a period of time, we begin to experience a spiritual death decline and then we could become spiritually dead meaning there is no spirit of life that's why the relationship has to become intentional I talked about relationships to such a defining point last night of comparing it in the natural and the spiritual if you don't put anything in, you don't get anything out. So here, where God is speaking to his chosen people, during this particular passage, he's talking to Moses to talk to the nation. They went in as a people. They came out as a nation of people. Even those who were not of the Israelite descent, some still came out of Egypt with them. A nation. And God is telling them about his Sabbath day. Let's read that again. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak also, 
Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbaths ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations. That was their covenant that they had to keep. What about the covenant that you have with God that you have to keep? As you uphold your end of the covenant, it demonstrates that you belong to God. I have a covenant. The beginning of that covenant is my faith in Jesus Christ. That is the start of your covenant. That by faith, you know, you believe by faith that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That is the beginning of your covenant. And there is a lot that God presents to us in this covenant. Our job is the faith portion, the obedience, the humility, trusting him in his word. Because that is what we live by. Also, let's take a look at 1 Peter took a look at first uh second peter last night the bible study teaching has been added to our youtube channel as well as to our youtube page facebook so last night after coming in from bible study i did grab a little bit to eat and then made sure that i added that information First Peter, first chapter 15. And it reads as follows. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Let's read 13. Let's back up. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And so where it encourages us here in the word, that once we come to Christ Jesus, we are new in him. Over in Romans 12, it says, Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do we do that? Through the word of God. We are transformed. Our minds become anew. We consider the ways of God. In all actuality. we, sh As he said. Listen. You are of a royal priesthood. Do you not know that we really should study about what that means? What is a royal priesthood? How am I royal? What does royal mean? Help me to understand that, Father God. Help me to know and help me to demonstrate my royal priesthood. Because I can't do it without you. I 
And we're back. Do you not know that God is awesome? That God is all-knowing? That God is all-powerful? And so, where it says that you're chosen, what does that mean? A royal priesthood, what does that mean? I believe that that's something that we should look up and understand. What does it mean to be of a royal priesthood? If we don't know, how can we live that way? So I think that sometimes in the word of God, when we come across things, listen, pull out your dictionary. Pull out your thesaurus, pull out your resource books and ask the Holy Spirit to help you with understanding what God expects of us because we're set aside, which means in God, we, we put aside our former lust, our, our old nature and with the help of the Holy Spirit because remember we have help to mature we are fashioned we are groomed with the way that we carry ourselves with our conversations yes our whole demeanor changes it doesn't say that to act better or superior to anyone but our language changes, which means if we once had a filthy mouth, we no longer have a filthy mouth. If we once spoke of a lot of doubt and negativity, now we no longer speak of doubt and negativity, but we speak of positive. We speak of good spiritual life. So therefore, do you see how we are changed? We are transformed. Our, the, the way we carry ourselves, the way we present ourselves, change. It really does. Because not only are we of a royal priesthood of a holy nation, we are now ambassadors of Christ. And we must represent him at a certain way so let's look up the words I encourage you look up these words and familiarize yourself <clears throat> excuse me and allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you when we look at the word Jehovah Mishkadim we have been set apart made holy and redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ Therefore, we are to continue to live our lives holy and pleasing unto God. Now, let us now go over to the book of Hebrew, Hebrews. I find it very, very interesting uh, on how we are to make sure that we pronounce the books of the Bible correctly. Some things growing up you hear it and we add an S to it or something like that and there is no S. But there is an S for Hebrews. For instance when we say I believe it's Matthew Growing up, I always heard Matthews, and it's not Matthews, it's the book of Matthew. So I try to be conscious of that. Over in Hebrews, the 13th chapter, on the 12th verse, it reads as follows, Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood suffereth without the gate so his blood his precious blood 
sanctifies us. In the Old Testament, they did sacrifice lambs and other animals as instructed by God. But the ultimate sacrifice is Jesus Christ. There is no other sacrifice needed by mankind or animal sacrifice to redeem us to the Father. Now, our sacrifice that we make is submitting ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. So that is the sacrifice that we offer unto him. And that means that in our life, we submit ourselves unto him under his tutelage at his instructions and at his directions to do his will. Now we're going to go over to 1 Thessalonians 5th chapter and the 23rd verse. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your soul your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. So who called you can also sanctify you. Isn't that amazing? It's not passed to someone else. You know, when you call some a place like customer service, they might pass you to someone else. To resolve the issue. But when you come. By faith to Jesus Christ. There is an answer. And the answer is in him. In the word. In the beginning. Was God. And the word was with God. The word is God. And he took that which is of himself and sent it down in the likeness of flesh, which is Jesus Christ. Let me read that again. And the very God of peace sanctified you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Yes, God can sanctify you. Paul's final prayer for the Thessalonian believers is that they be sanctified through and through, spirit and soul and body. Their whole being was to be sanctified and thereby preserved or preserved blameless until the return of the Lord Jesus for a discussion of this. Listen, you got to study sanctification. That is sanctification. God is good and he is worthy to be praised. So if you're wondering how can I be sanctified, this is a covenant promise. Visit the scripture text in Exodus 31, 12 through 13, 1 Peter 1, 15 through 16, Hebrews 13 through 12, 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 through 24. And uh, also in 1 Peter, read, uh, start at the 13th verse, back up like we did, and go through the 25th verse. I pray that what we've shared to you is food unto your soul and a light unto your path. Don't forget to visit our website at www.angelfergusonministries.com. That's angelferguson-ministries.com. Visit our Facebook page for all updates. We try to keep it updated for you. We love you without measure simply because we believe in the potential in each and every one of you. Have a blessed day in the Lord.